money. We have the greatest organization. Uh, we're doing fine. Look, in October, late October of four years ago, Herman Cain was the front runner for the Republican nomination. Eight years ago, Hillary Clinton was up by 26 points against an unknown uh, state senator named Barack Obama. They are back on the campaign trail, seeking to either capitalize or make convenient excuses for their performance earlier this week in Colorado. But try as they might, it's obvious there were those Republican presidential candidates who couldn't save their hopes if they were armed with magic pixie dust and another terrible set of debate moderators. Whither go us to those who would be leader next? And how about making a radical change in the debate structure to get some actual, real, substantive debate? Let's get the answers now. Patrick Murray is director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute, hard and fast on the numbers. Bradley Blakeman is the Republican strategist and Georgetown University professor. I thank you both for joining us. And Brad, I'm going to begin with you. We just heard from Jeb Bush the day after the debate, telling everybody, I'm still in it. I'm not going anywhere. Is he spinning his wheels? No, he's not. Uh, look, Jeb has got staying power. He's absolutely right that Iowa is not necessarily the predictor of who the nominee is going to be. It's extremely early. And what you have to do is you have to be smart. You have to also be cagey. Uh, and you also need ground game. And uh, Jeb certainly has the ground game in the states that are necessary. The question is, is, is he going to be able to act on that ground game? Uh, I don't believe Trump has game. He certainly has the ability to create attention, but past that, it, that remains to be seen. So I think Jeb lives to fight another day for sure. Patrick, is that just it? Are we just building, are we putting too much into one debate and are we just knee jerking here like everybody else when it comes to Jeb Bush? Yeah, nobody wins a nomination based on one debate. However, one debate can hurt you seriously. And in fact, if Jeb Bush did not have the money behind him that he already has accumulated, uh, I think we would be talking about his demise right now uh, because of that. I, th I think he does have the ability to stay in here because he has the money to continue on, uh, which has killed other candidates in the past because they haven't been able to raise the m money that they need afterwards, and he's already got it in the bank. One of the problems that Jeb Bush has, and when he brings up Herman Cain was in the lead, of uh, he forgot that uh, Mitt Romney was close behind in second place in every single poll, regardless of who was in the lead in those early days. And Jeb Bush has not distinguished himself or, or set himself apart from the pack of establishment candidates because uh, we think somebody's going to come out of that bracket between him and Marco Rubio and John Kasich and Chris Christie. And uh, he, he, I think he hurt himself because I think we'll see a lot of voters or a number of voters, particularly in key states like New Hampshire, taking a closer look at some folks like Kasich or Christie, and Jeb's got to act fast to head that off. I think it is fair to say that certainly the electorate is different in Iowa and in New Hampshire, and you can certainly focus on one. So, Brad, let me come to you then on maybe one of the individuals we saw on the debate stage earlier this week who perhaps needs to call it a day, Rand Paul. What do you think? No, absolutely. I think Rand Paul's days are past. I also think um, Huckabee, of course, uh, is not going to be able to withstand uh, too much more um, attention because he doesn't warrant it in the polls and in fundraising. So I think in the next, I would say, 30 days, you're going to see people drop off solely because they don't have the money, they don't have the organization, and it's now time to whittle down the field so we can get some serious attention to those who deserve it. So who else instead of Rand Paul? You said a couple of guys. Rand Paul and whom else? Huckabee. I think... Uh, uh, you know, Ted Cruz has some money. He's got a little bit of staying power, and so does Christie. But in my opinion, uh, you know, I'm a favor. I, I like math, and I believe Kasich, uh, being the governor of Ohio, a must-win state for Republicans, and Marco Rubio, uh, certainly, um, in my opinion, uh, if I had to pick a candidate, those would be the candidates I would want. Uh, leading the Republicans. Patrick, I saw you nod your head a little bit when, when Kasich was mentioned here. He came out firing fast and furious, but there's still people who say that he is on the downside now, and the numbers will tell us that he can't survive, and Mike Huckabee can't survive. From what you were able to glean, and from what the numbers tell us from Wednesday, who else, instead of Rand Paul, now needs to seriously consider getting out? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree that uh, Rand Paul, Mike Huckabee, uh, on that stage, probably need to call it a day. Uh, the four candidates who participated in the early debate need to call it a day just so we can focus a little bit more on these other candidates. Now, the question is, 
you know, the case of get out, Christy get out, that neither of them have been uh, getting the bumps that they hoped that they would get after some good performances in past debates. But I think it's, it's early days, and I agree that, that this is a long process. One of the things that I think the Republican Party cannot afford is if Donald Trump stays in this race and, and continues to be at or near the top, they can't, the Republican Party cannot afford to have both Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush in this race when March 15th rolls around. And okay, let me stop March you there if I can, Patrick, for a moment, because you hit on Donald Trump. So let me ask this. If you start paring this down, you take two or three, you throw them out, the ones we're talking about here. Now you have fewer. And we haven't talked about Rubio and Fiorina. Fiorina got a lot of air time, and Marco Rubio had a great performance. Do you then think, and Patrick, to you first, that if you winnow down the field and that you get the really hard cores that are doing well, Donald Trump and even Ben Carson will be able to stand the heat? I think they're going to be able to stick around for a while because of this incredible sense of dissatisfaction that Republican voters have with their own party's leadership. And that's what they're riding, and I think they're going to continue to ride it. I think what we saw in the debate the other night shows that, that, that they will be continuing to ride. Now, are they going to be able to win? Are they going to be in a top spot all along? No. But are they going to get enough support to keep them through those early uh, contests? Yeah, I think so. So then, Brad, this dissatisfaction, this resonance we've been hearing about over and over and over again, in your opinion, then, if you get down to the hardcore politicians like Carly Fiorina and Marco Rubio and maybe Huckabee sticks around, will that still stick? Will the American public still turn to dissatisfaction or will they start hearing something else that will then get under the skin of Donald Trump? I think the American people at that point, especially Republican voters, are going to have enough out of their system. And in my opinion, 2015 is the year of the outsider, and 2016 will be the year of the insider, people who can actually get the job done. And we're going to find out if the emperor has no clothes with Donald Trump, because he needs to turn out votes. And right now, he's running a very subjective campaign. It's all about him. The objectivity comes when people actually have to go in the voting booth. You can't spin that. Either you win or you lose. And Donald Trump is not a very good loser. And so if he loses Iowa, he goes into New Hampshire. The question is, is he going to be able to survive beyond that? I think Donald Trump, if he doesn't, will get out quick because he does not like to lose. I'll tell you what, though, he is still leading the polls no matter what we say. We have to keep going back to that. There are still people who believe in him. I got 90 seconds left, so I'd like a short answer from both of you, if you would, please. Patrick, to you first. Rents Priebus and the RNC is complaining about this debate format. Isn't it time that we changed it and stopped having these cattle calls? Cut it down to six. Have one single moderator who just simply lets them sit at a table and battle it out between themselves. That's a big point, isn't it? Stop looking for different commentators, different voices. Get one guy, one gal in there who can handle it. Brad, I'll tell you what, I think Patrick hit it right here. Because if you got one person, focus, give us substance. Right. I agree with Patrick. And I also uh, have to say the RNC, you are to blame for Wednesday night. You cut the deal. You approved it. What else did you expect was going to happen? So distancing yourself from something you created is not going to work. It, it hurt your candidates when people are talking about the host of the debate more than they're talking about the answers from the candidates. And the RNC should be out in front saying, we made the mistake. I think people would have a lot you of bet. respect for that if they came out and said that. Brad Blakeman, Patrick Murray, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll talk soon. Now, one year ago, the entire world was forced to consider a disease that had no cure, that couldn't be stopped. It was infecting millions. And it was coming here to the American shore. And as a matter of fact, it was here. Now, in that one year, what have we learned after Ebola? That and much more when we continue right here on The Hard Line. Now this promotional announcement. The shocking new book, Unlikable, The Problem with Hillary by Edward Klein, could well be his next New York Times bestseller. It's called by some of the most powerful expose on Hillary ever written. In Unlikable, author Ed Klein offers a stunning, powerful expose of Hillary Clinton and her race for the White House. With unprecedented access, he meticulously recreates conversations and details of Hillary Clinton's behind-the-scenes plotting. Klein also reveals the angry rivalry between Hillary and Barack Obama. Unlikable retails for $29.95, but now you can get it with this free offer. It's an almost $30 value, absolutely free. All you have to do is go to Newsmax.com forward slash Klein or call toll free 800-850-8749. The 2016 election is fast approaching. You need to get unlikable. Be armed with the truth about Hillary Clinton. 
800-850-8749, newsmax.com forward slash Klein.